So Z, Z rank, we're happy with this. Yeah, that Z rank's not changing. Yeah. Um, S rank's not changing, sure. No, that's fine. Uh, A rank. I'm happy with that. Yeah, A rank's fine. Uh, Can I tell you one that's really been bothering me, and it bothers me every time I look at it? Go for it. You may disagree with me. I think Tian Shinhan Saga should be in the A ranking because what we've neglected to mention in the previous <laughs> video is yeah. that Master Roshi enters the tournament again as Jackie Chun. He has a great fight with Tian as well. And that's when he realizes I'm sort of past it now. So I'm going to, yeah. I mean, maybe not an A rank, but maybe moved front of the tournament saga. Yeah. I'm, 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 happy it, I'm happy with it being B rank. I don't think it quite jumps enough. Yeah, be A rank on the strength of that one change, but definitely towards the top of B rank. If you want to shift it around that way? That's fine. Yeah. Okay. So, but I think overall, because I was, because I've had a bit more time to think about it since then. I love the first tournament saga. I really do. But I feel the tournaments in Dragon Ball get better and better. Yeah. And um, I think Chen Shinhan should be above that. But that was the only change I had for that. I get the feeling we may get people really disagreeing with the red ribbon ones, but I don't. I I don't know people. I trust me. I have watched this arc a few times, and um, I don't know. It just does nothing for me. It's not that they're bad. Mm -hmm. I just think other stuff is better. I'm still of the opinion that Garlic Junior might well should in theory be E rank, but I think that's just because I really have zero interest in it. Yeah. Um, but it's not irredeemably bad, though. To me, no, E rank the, is like I I really dislike pretty much almost everything about it. Yeah. Um, whereas Garlic Junior, he's interesting enough as a villain that he's not just. He's not really interesting. It's mainly like I think what we agreed on is that it's not Goku's going to save the day again. Yeah, I you think know, that, it's again, Piccolo, Gohan, uh, and Krillin. It's a big win for Gohan as well. But then it's like, but then you think back to the fight. It's like, what is it really? It's like Gohan creates a protective barrier, mm -hmm. and then Garlic Junior just gets sucked into the dead zone again. Yes, again. <laughs> and it's like, well, that's not really a win. Mm -hmm. You just outlasted someone being stupid. Yeah, true. Okay, <laughs> fair enough then. But we're quite happy to have it at the bottom of D rank. I'm I'm happy enough to leave it at the bottom of D rank for now. It depends on how things pan out. Yeah. Uh, but I'm happy with the list as it is so far, to be honest. It's kind of, I can't see anything that I would immediately want to change. I mean, okay, then. We'll, we'll leave it as it is for now, then. I mean, I think if, if I really had to pick something to change, I'd probably swap uh, the Ginyu and uh, semi-perfect, perfect Cell Saga bit over. Just swap their positions over with each other. like that. That's probably the only thing I would do. Just because yeah. I think you get a bit more mileage out of perfect Cell than you do the Ginyu Force. That is still C rank. It's a very minor change, if anything, really. Yeah, no, fair enough then. I mean, you could even argue that could happen as well. Yeah. Because um, Raditz, it's just such a game-changing moment. Mm. Okay, people, that's how we're leaving it for now. We are finished with the Dragon Ball Z section, and now we're going to move on to Dragon Ball GT. Jack. Dragon Ball GT. <laughs> God. Dun, 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 it is a desperate search do do yeah. across the I mainly listen to the uh, Japanese version. Oh god, it's yeah, I mean, I love I, the soundtrack of Dragon Ball GT by the way. The music in it is amazing. Yeah. This is the show that followed after Dragon Ball Z. This is not Akira Toriyama, this is a Toei thing. And there's no manga that is based off. It is literally all original work. Yeah. And it starts with the Black Star Dragon arc. I yeah. think this will be the first E rank. That's first E. It's a flawed premise to begin with. Mm -hmm. And the big thing that they wanted with GT is two things. One, they wanted a quote unquote new generation to take over. That's why it's Pan and Trunks mm -hmm. there rather than anyone else. Yes. And Kid Goku gets wished back to being a kid because, okay. Um, <laughs> yes, okay. <laughs> and the other side of it is they wanted to do more adventure stuff because they did lots of action stuff with Z. Well, they wanted to do a throwback to Dragon Ball. Yeah. But it just completely is. lacked the charm. Yeah. The big, the big problem is the reason why they changed to the tournament arc, arc style in the first place at the beginning of Dragon Ball is because the adventure stuff they're doing at the beginning, beginning wasn't selling well in the manga. So that's why the tournament stuff started. So yeah. you're basically going back to a flawed premise with using not the worst characters. Trunks isn't bad. Pan's irritating, but, well, she's just irritating. And then you're just like, oh, Kid Goku, which is just 
But it's like, like the, the biggest flaw right there is like making Goku a kid, like these black star Dragon Balls that just appear out of nowhere. Mm. They're never mentioned. They're just, they're very dangerous because if you make a wish with these black star Dragon Balls, they, you know, the planet that the wishes were made out from would blow up. So yeah. Earth's got like a year to live, hence the reason why they go out into the universe to try and find them because they don't just spread across the Earth, they spread yeah. across the universe. They're literally just left out there in the open because it's actually Emperor P Piloth who mm. makes the, who sort of accidentally makes the wish that turns yeah. Goku into a, a kid. Into a kid again. And, and as a kid, he's nerfed and everything. It's just, yeah, they go to all these different planets. I'm just thinking to myself, I do not care about this. There's no overarching villain or anything like that. We do get one a little bit later, but it takes like a good 25 to 30 episodes in between that. Like they, they go on this one planet where there's this weirdo who likes to dress pan up in like different doll clothes yeah. and things yeah, like that. Yeah, he's turned her into a doll and he's dressing her up in clothes. It's like... Oh, it's just bad. And it just, it just, it just feels like it's moving in slow motion. It's like, it's like she has, okay, she's been turned into a doll, but you do realize you're still undressing a 10 year old. And dressing yes. her up in weird clothes. Yes, just it's, weird, it's, man. And and oh. they had like those like those those gym nuts that keep listening to that music. Mm -hmm. I can't remember what they're called, but um, oh my god, par. Um, yeah, par. yeah, oh the Power Power Brothers, whatever they're called. <laughs> it's just bad, man. I remember watching it when it aired, and I was thinking to myself, "This is bad," because I still, like we said, we still got some enjoyment, even though we know mm -hmm. it's we, we acknowledge it's the weakest art. That being Margin Boo, but there are still elements of it that we really enjoyed. There is almost nothing about this that I enjoy, no. and it it deserves to be firmly placed in the E rank where it belongs. Um, I, I don't really have anything else to add to this, Martin. Like, no, I don't. There is the only redeeming thing is Vegeta had a tash for a bit, and that was quite funny. <laughs> I shaved off my moustache, you oh, idiot! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Vegeta yeah. has a tash for some reason, and he's cut his hair. Yeah, yeah. whatever. <laughs> that's it. It's like that's the only that was that was quite. a... That was a fun change when you first see it. He's walking around in leather and he's got a moustache. Yes, <laughs> yes. Okay, Jeets. <laughs> yeah. Whatever, dude. Yeah, it's it, it's bad, man. Uh, yeah, I, I'm trying to think. I'm trying to be fair. Like, what positive can I say about it? Not much, really. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think we've hit everything that's that positive about it, really. There's nothing yeah, extra to yeah. bring in. It's there, bad, there, there aren't really any positives to this saga. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I... And it's clear that the, the show, right, they, they were panicking a little bit because we go from shit to arguably hit. And that's the baby saga, which to baby me saga. is easily the best arc of Dragon Ball GT. I, it's the only real reason to watch GT. Yes. <laughs> I, with, the, with the baby arc, you've got a villain that's, and you've got an interesting villain because it's kind of so far, you haven't done body possession this way yet. Yes. Because it's kind of like, you've done body swaps of Ginyu. But that's a body swap. People yes. know what's happened, and it's only one person, one for one. Yes. With uh, Boo absorbing people or cell absorbing people, they're just absorbed. He's got their power. They're not still moving around. Yes. Baby is in active control of everyone he has gone through. Like a virus. He's yeah. like a virus, isn't he? He's a tuffle as well, isn't he? He is. Um, this is like, they were like a, a, a race that the Saiyans more or less wiped out. Yeah. And um, he wants revenge on them because this version of Baby you see here. Yeah, yeah he's he's gone into Vegeta's body, so he's using that as the main one. But he still has the, active uh, control over the... basically everyone else on Earth that he's gone through. Mm -hmm. I think they actually say he's gone through everyone. Yes, yeah, he he went through Goten, then he mm -hmm. went through Gohan, and he then used the Vegeta host. as a host. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and stupidly powerful. The the ending of this arc. This is what I was referring. What I spoke about briefly with the Garlic Junior thing. The only way to get rid of the, par the baby parasites from everyone is with the ultra divine water, which was brought up yeah, first yeah. in that arc. So it's kind of it's a nice callback. It's not a ma it's not a, really a point in favor of the garlic junior stuff, but it is just a, a nice little mention. I love Super Saiyan Four. Um, yeah. I I love the design of it. I just think it's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> I also like the fact it breaks away from the. You know the the gold hair. You know, like. Yeah, because everything else is just hair. Even with Ultra Instinct, Super Saiyan God, it's just hair color change, really. Yeah, Super Saiyan Four is so powerful that it basically breaks the spell that's keeping <laughs> Goku as a child <laughs> and makes him an adult again. <laughs> 
That's how powerful Super Saiyan 4 is. Mm-hmm. Not even the Black Star Dragon Balls can contain that power. Yeah. But then you have the, you have the Uzaru come back for like the first time oh, since. Oh, God, yes, you Probably the Saiyan saga, yeah. really, isn't it? Yeah. Um, so they've, that comes back, which is an, a nice callback, so nice reference there. This may be a bit controversial, but I, I kind of like the transformation as well. Mm. Whereas you had Super Saiyan 3, which was about screaming for 10, mm. for 10 minutes straight. Super Saiyan 4, there's something very calm and tranquil about it. Mm. Uh, and that music that plays over it, which is like a different rendition of the Dragon Ball GT theme. I don't know. It, there's just something very, almost like spiritual, kind of relaxing about it. Yeah. <laughs> And when you see Super Saiyan 4, you know, I don't know. It's just, just when you, when it's first revealed and the smoke clears and Pan's like, Grandpa, is that you? And it just feels like a really powerful form. Mm. And I just love it when Goku gets serious, when he has like that look on his face, you know, you see yeah. it when he arrives at the battlefield with mm. Nappa and Vegeta and he's not interested in Nappa. He's staring directly at Vegeta and he just has this sheer look of anger on his face. You kind of get that with Super Saiyan 4. Yeah. Especially when, you know, he tries to get through to Bulma and she rejects it. And, you know, I'm, I belong to Master Baby. You know, you yeah. Saiyan scum and Bot- Goku's giving her that look, you know, don't you recognise me? It's me. Do you know what I mean? It's Goku. Yeah. It's Sunken. You know, you've known me <laughs> since I was a boy. Um, yeah, I really like the baby arc, actually. I'm happy to put that sort of in the B rank. It's a little bit too short for what it is. It's kind of like, if you're going to do this whole body control thing, especially with like the twist reveal that he had control of Trunks the whole time, if he mm. wanted to, uh, yes. it's kind of like, uh, if you had made, if they made it a bit longer, developed it a bit more, it could probably be the A rank, because you've got a really good idea for a story there, which is yeah. something that Dragon Ball hadn't really tackled at that point. Mm-hmm. So you could do that. Especially the whole uh, the Tuffle race dealing with the past of the Saiyans yes. coming back to haunt them a little bit. Yes. It's, a bit too, it's too short for what it needs to be, but yeah, B, B rank is good. Super 17. E rank. <laughs> <laughs> it's better than the first art, but it is still rubbish. It's still rubbish. It's, it's what, six episodes? It's so short, yes. <laughs> it's like you have the question of like, okay, so the person who created Android Baby. <laughs> Is now in hell and meets Jero. Yeah. Okay, and they somehow manage to build a perfect Android Seventeen in hell with no lab and no equipment. <laughs> Who then can talk to Android Seventeen in the real world, and then they fuse together somehow? Because even though they're still in hell in separate worlds, why and- is Android Seventeen so powerful? I know there's two of them and they fuse, but I'm sorry, Android, a fused Android 17 should not be able to even compete with Super Saiyan 4 Goku. No, not at all. But at the same time, it's just like, this is, this is the thing. Uh, it's like, okay, Android 17, fused with Android 17 in theory, would be equivalent to 
semi-perfect to basic perfect cell. Um, but we're now, yeah, as you say, we're on Super Saiyan 4 now. How is he holding his own? Then Goku gets sent to hell to fight Frieza and Cell. Oh, God, I forgot about that. Yeah. God, that's all, that all happens within six episodes. Yeah. And then he comes back, and then yeah, but he comes back. But the only way they could do it is by having Piccolo go there. Yes, yes. Piccolo's decided to die at the end of the baby arc because reason. Yeah. No, it, it is bad, man. It is bad. Yeah. I mean, it's better than the Black Star Dragon Balls arc. Super Saiyan Four can't beat this thing, but Goku, in his base form, after he's completely exhausted, can use a Dragon Fist mm-hmm. and go right through Android Seventy. It's so stupid. Yeah, E rank. I, I, can we just move on from it? Like, I don't yeah, really have anything on. else to say about it, really. <laughs> yeah, and we've great. gone from shit back to not quite hit, but. A, a, a big improvement on what came before yeah. <laughs> the Shadow Dragon Saga. Shadow Dragon Saga. If this was the entire point of GT, like the whole thing was, I don't know, Pilaf makes the wish and the Dragon Balls crack and the evil dragons appear then. And it's oh, I love the concept. This. I love the concept. Because this would be really good. Yeah. The, your over-reliance on the Dragon Balls has caused this to happen. Yeah. It would make so much more sense because they, they do abuse those Dragon Balls over Z. Yes. It's, but then, yeah, that would be a great idea because the Shadow Dragons, I mean, some of them I'm not too keen on the designs of, but that's just choice. Um, to me, it really kicks off when um, into the second half, which is when I think it's Nova Shenron, the four star yeah. ball, and the his brother star. Ice, I think that's what it's called, and then mm. Omega Shenron shows up. That's really the meat and potatoes of the arc there. Yeah. Um, anything it's... leading up to it, I can really take or leave. I don't hate yeah. it, but. I was like, yeah, whatever. I'm not too fussed. Yeah, it's like, it's not, there's not anything in the first part of it that's really that interesting. It's just them going, finding a Dragon Ball, fighting a, a monster of some sort that's vaguely dragon-shaped. Yeah. Basic allusions to the Dragon Balls, that's it. Sin Shenron, then Omega Shenron, because he becomes yeah. Omega Shenron later. Th- this is where the, the problem for me it hits, because it's kind of, the story they have for this arc isn't really that interesting. Mm. It's a really good concept, but it's really poorly done they sort of dropped the ball with it yeah yeah because it's kind of like okay like i said if this was a 60 episode arc and it's like you know you've got like a good five to ten episodes on each dragon ball then you've got something Mm. you can build up a story around it Mm. and how they go from one to the next all you've really got is three really interesting fights vegeta becoming a super saiyan 4 as well fusion dance for gogeta first appearance any super saiyan 4 gogeta as well no no, first appearance is uh, the film isn't it yeah, the fusion reborn. I think the way Dragon Ball GT ends is really strong, though. Oh, I was that was watching, a beautiful ending. Yeah, I was once again watching Totally Not Mark's recent mm-hmm. upload, and I went back and watched the final episode after it. It's one of the best episodes in Dragon Ball, period. It is so... Like, the ending is so wonderful. Mm. And GT, for all of its faults, they nail the ending. Very rare you get that, where a show starts mm-hmm. off really badly but absolutely yeah. sticks the landing yeah. um the ending it, it i would go and say it's actually beautiful it's just yeah. so wonderful it's the perfect ending to goku story and the story of dragon ball in general i, yeah. I can't fault it it's perfect i also i quite like um omega shenron as well he's a little bit unevil i like the idea he's absorbed all the other dragons and mm. No matter what Goku does, whether he uses the times 10 uh, Kamehameha or even the Dragon Fist, even the Dragon Fist doesn't get the job done. The fact he uses that universal spirit bomb at the end, there's a debate at the end of that. Is Goku actually dead at that point when he's using the spirit bomb? My answer is. What's your theory? My answer is no, he's not dead. Because if he was dead, and Dragon Ball's been pretty clear about this, if you're dead and on Earth, you have the ring around your head. The halo, yeah. You have the halo. So that's basically it. There hasn't been an in-between. Yeah. I mean, you do have kind of like ghostly presences when, you know, Go- Goku talks to uh, Gohan during the father-son Kamehameha to kill a uh, perfect cell. Yeah. But it's, like, it's clear it's just like a ghostly image. It's not, and he's talking to him. So the ghostly image is probably just in Gohan's mind. Yes. Rather than actually physically being there. Mm-hmm. So to my mind, Goku's not dead. Okay. But he, he does go off with Shenron at the end. Yeah. I think it's a case of Goku ha- at that point has become so has become so unequivocally powerful. You know what it reminds me of when he goes off with Shenron at the end? Mm. It's it. almost like when Frodo 
and Bilbo and Gandalf go off with the elves oh, a little bit at the end of the Fellowship catch. of the Ring. That to, is a good to, to the great. What, what was? Yeah. What? Where do they go again? Oh, is that the, uh, the Grey Haven. Havens? Yeah, it's kind of like that. Oh no, the Undying Lands. Grey Havens. Yeah, is the, the un- from. yes, yeah, the Undying Lands. Yeah, it kind of reminds me of that a little bit. Mm. And you're happy, but you feel a sense of sadness as well because mm. I love these characters in this in this show for the most part. And I, you know, me and I think I speak for you as well. We have grown up watching these characters. And when you see it come to an end, like obviously we have Super now and they have films coming out every three years. Mm. Um, But that, when you keep it within that context of it ending there, Mm. you feel a sense of loss at the same time. I mean, you can get that, you can get that with, you know, with Star Wars or Lord of the Rings or whatever it may be. And, you know, you really feel that at the end of this episode. Yeah. This is so difficult to rank. I don't know where to put it because um, I love the ending, but the arc overall is a mixed bag. The arc overall, I mean, it has a weak start, very strong finish. I, I'm, I, I'm, my heart says it should go into the B rank, but my head is saying it should be C. I'll go with B rank um, because I, 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 I sold the whole A rank thing for on the strength of Margin Vegeta and yeah. his sacrifice. I think that last episode, it's really, really strong. Is that that last episode of Goku going it's off the show? So on. good, isn't it? It's so good. It's like, at the back end of the B rank, well, slightly higher. Do you want? Should we put it next to the baby arc? Let's put it next to the baby arc for now. Yeah. Yeah, and that's really due to the strength of the ending. Mm. The ending is so good. I know people will probably disagree. You know, one episode doesn't make a good arc, but it, it is really strong. I, I yeah, I. Yeah, I mean, I, and frankly, I don't hate it. I don't hate this arc. I think it's yeah. okay. Um, uh, you, yeah, you're right. One episode doesn't make an arc, but then this is such a strong episode. It is kind of the exception that proves the rule, as it were. Yeah, absolutely. Like, yeah. It's not a weak. It's not a bad arc. Mm-hmm. It's just it starts off weak and becomes stronger as it goes. Yeah, it's an yeah. Energy ball of Dragon Ball. Yeah, yes. <laughs> it certainly sums up Dragon Ball GT. Hmm. Hey!